More than a kilometer of Greenland ice, there lies a city no one remembers. No lights, no people, only ice, steel, and atomic energy. They called it Camp Century, the city under the ice. Built in 1960, during the height of the Cold War, when the Arctic became the silent border of superpowers. Officially, it was a scientific outpost. In truth, it was one of the boldest engineering experiments in history to build a network of nuclear tunnels capable of hiding missiles beneath the ice. Hundreds of C-130 cargo planes delivered tons of steel, timber and machinery, and a PM-2 Ampere's nuclear reactor, small enough to fit underground, powerful enough to light a city. Outside, it was 40 degrees Celsius. The first drills struck the ice, echoing like metal through glass. Each cut opened a hollow chamber of frozen air. Within two years, over 3,000 meters of tunnels took shape, six meters high, eight meters wide, reinforced with beams and plywood. They believed ice would hold like concrete, but ice is not stone. It moves. It breathes. Below. It shifted millimeters every day. Walls bent. Beams creaked. Instruments recorded deformation. The ice was consuming the structure. Inside, a small city took form control room, barracks, workshop, radio post. Yellow light reflected on frozen walls, like metal breathing in sleep. No day, no night only data, hums, and the wind whispering through ducts. At the core, the PM2 Ampere's reactor hummed at 1.5 megawatts. No flame, no sound of combustion. Just power contained inside silence. They thought precision could tame nature. But by 1964, ceilings dropped a meter. Pipes burst. A note in a logbook read, the ice is eating the structure. They thought they built a city for eternity. But the ice remembers, don't leave yet. The next part will reveal how mankind drilled into the first layer of silence and what the ice said back. Before the tunnels, they had to find a stable base. Greenland's ice sheet, 1,000, 200 meters thick, slowly flowing like a frozen river. June 1,000, 959. The first survey team arrived. Winds, 60 kilometers per hour. Temperature, 27 degrees Celsius. They planted metal stakes 10 meters deep by the center of Camp Century. Thermal drilling began. Hollow steel pipes, heated by electric coils, melted through layers of ice. Steam rose and instantly froze again. Drill. Withdraw. Scrape. Repeat. Hundreds of times a day. The sound echoed across the plain. Low. Metallic. Endless. It wasn't cracking. It was ice responding. Special microphones captured the sound. The signal showed a steady pulse, deep and rhythmic. They called it the pulse of ice. From that moment, every instrument, sensor, clock, generator was calibrated to that rhythm. One engineer said, the ice has a heartbeat and we're cutting through it. By the 15th of August, 1959, the drill reached 30 meters. The ice below turned deep blue. When they paused, the hole began to close. The ice didn't like open space. They pumped warm air to keep the void. The wind rushing through pipes sounded like breathing. At 40 meters, they installed the first aluminum frame. A note in the journal read, we are drilling into silence. The tunnels were numbered, starting with tunnel A. Operation Ice Worm had begun. And the snow miller, a machine that could eat ice like metal, was on its way. The snow miller arrived in early 1960. A four five meter long, 300 ton steel beast built to devour ice. Its rotating auger melted and carved frozen corridors like an industrial worm. Temperature inside, seven degrees Celsius. 16 hours a day, it advanced, leaving smooth white walls behind. By mid-1961, 21 tunnels had been cut over 3,000 meters of passageways under the ice. Each tunnel stood 6 meters tall, 8 meters wide. Steel arches bolted into the ice. Moisture crystallized on the ceiling, a canopy of frost. The hum of fans, 
12,000 revolutions per minute, filled the air with constant vibration. Men worked under yellow lamps, breath visible, radios hissing faint static. Copy that. Footsteps echoed for seconds. They called it industrial silence. No sky, no horizon, only geometry and hum. Cables stretched along the walls, 3,000 meters of copper wiring covered in rubber insulation. Sparks froze mid-air during welding. Ice was no longer an obstacle, it became a material. At the center of this frozen maze, they would place the heart, a nuclear reactor. The PM2 Amperes reactor arrived late 1960. 23 modules, 400 tons in total. Enough to power the entire camp and the idea of a future under the ice. When activated, steam faster. condensed into glowing drops on the ceiling. Radiation sealed within lead walls and ice barriers. Nobody stayed near it for more than 10 minutes. The hum deepened 50 hertzes, the rhythm of containment. The camp vibrated softly, lights flickering with each pulse. Some said they could feel the sound in their bones. Electricity flowed through copper veins. Engines started. Lights steadied. Camp Century alive, under the Arctic. Man had trapped the sun inside the cold. But warmth made the ice move. Every watt of power Recall shifted the balance. Camp Century personnel and nature began days. to answer. In silence. Camp Century housed 200 men. Corridors stayed lit 24 hours. The hum never stopped. Every day, measure, record, transmit. Food freeze-dried, water melted from ice, air filtered, recycled, a perfect machine. There were no sounds of birds, no colors, only footsteps, radio static, and breath behind masks. A scientist wrote, silence has structure, outside blizzards, inside a world at minus 10 degrees, stable, humming, every motion precise, every second measured. They called it discipline, but under the instruments, the ice was still moving, quietly, inevitably. They lived in the rhythm of machines, not the rhythm of time. By 1963, sensors showed drift. Tunnel E tilted five degrees. Ceilings dropped 30 centimeters. The ice was pressing back. First came the sound crack. A slow bending beam, moaning under pressure. You could feel it before you heard it. They welded, reinforced, measured again. Pressure rose hourly. The ceiling pulsed like lungs. Pipes burst, freezing solid. Lights flickered. The hum distorted. Camp Century began collapsing from within. The ice wasn't attacking. It was just returning to its original shape. No steel could stop it. The engineers understood. It was time to leave. Anomaly In 1966, the evacuation Thermal began. The reactor dismantled, Celsius. flown out in 23 pieces. Everything else left behind. Doors sealed. Systems shut down. Temperature fell. The ice began to close. Within six months, Camp Century disappeared under 10 meters of snow. But inside remained fuel, batteries, and radioactive waste. A frozen time capsule. They didn't destroy it. They buried it alive. Five years later, nothing ice. remained on the Camp surface. No markers, no signs, only wind and white. Aerial surveys showed elevation rising five meters. The ice thickened pressing down. The base sank deeper. Pressure below over 30 bars. Temperature, minus 25. Everything preserved, perfectly still. They believed the ice would keep secrets forever. But the ice is melting. In 2016, satellites detected rapid melting. Camp Century sat inside the zone. 10 meters more, and its roof will surface again. Below fuel, chemicals, nuclear residue. If the ice melts, it all escapes into the Arctic. A forgotten experiment, awakening. By 2100, scientists predict, the entire base will emerge, not by man's hand, 
but my climate. The sound returns cracks, drips, wind slicing through new crevices. The earth opening its memory. The ice keeps no secrets. It only delays time. Camp Century, a frozen city of steel and silence. No explosions, no collapse. Just disappearance. It stands as proof that technology can challenge nature, but never command it. The ice did not fight. It waited. The structure was not destroyed, it was absorbed. Silence deeper than sound. Stillness Recall heavier than destruction. Operation Iceworm is the echo of human ambition. We can drill, build, and harness energy. But we cannot order the earth to stand still. Nothing built the ice is melting, forever. and what was buried is coming back.